What exactly is dormancy and why do succulents go through them? In 2005, James Fute, PhD at the Colorado State University Cooperative Extension said that dormancy in the Northern Hemisphere plants is caused by chemical changes within plant cells. It is stimulated by cooling temperature and shorter days in late summer and fall. This binds water so it cannot freeze and injure plant cells. To break dormancy, plants must first go through a period of cold about 40 degrees Fahrenheit or colder for an average of 63 days. This cold period triggers changes which, when warm weather appears, allow plants to deharden and resume growth. So imagine my happiness when I found out I was wondering in the summer and the spring why my plants are so slow in their growth. I mean, I fertilize, give it a lot of sun, I shade the ones that are uh, very sensitive to the, to the sun, especially the little babies that are just now growing. I just noticed that, yes, they propagate, they grow roots and they grow the plants, but it's, it's so slow in, in their growth. I, you know, I found out just from research that the following plants are the ones that are summer dormant and winter growers. So usually it refers to as winter growers. These genera are dormant during the warmer months of May through August. The primary growth actually occurs during autumn and spring while slowing considerably during the true winter. And many will exhibit marginal growth during the summer months, which was happening to me, as well as especially in the lily and the crassulaceae families. So here are the ones that are summer dormant and winter growers, which most of them I have. Ioniums, which are the most popular ones. This is an Ionium cyclops. Sedum Ioniums. Ionium pinwheels. Schwarzkopf. Adramiscus and Adramiscus cristatus. Cotyledon. The Crassulus, Graptopetalum. Graptovarius are hybrids of Echeverius and Graptopetalum. Worthius, the Allos, and Gasterias that are cousins. Then we have Kalanchoes. Kalanchoes come in all different sizes, color, shapes, and texture. Then we have Pachipithum. These are succulents that comes from the Greek name patches, which means thick, and python, which is plant, because of the shape of the leaf. Peperomia. A huge variety of sedum and sedum hybrids are available in all shapes and sizes as well.
this is Sanisha. Remember Sanisha or Rolianos? That is my string of pearl, my wayward child. Now I figure out the reason why it's not growing and it's really having a hard time is because it is actually a winter grow. So now I know this and uh, in California it really doesn't freeze and freezing temperatures are below 32 degrees which is not a usual normal occurrence. Now all my plants out there when it's 36 or higher and I'm seeing a lot of growth especially with sedums. Sedums um, they are really actually thriving in this um, cold weather. Three of them, even though the Echeverias during the winter time were really thriving here uh, because it's getting a lot of rain, um, as long as they are planted in ground, that's they're fine. They grow, they you know, they multiply. And I just my Echevera, especially the Embricata um, that I have a lot of, actually grow progressively. So there you have it. We thought that we would be free and clear of gardening during the winter months, but I guess we're not. <laughs> and that's just fine by me. And I am so excited to um, see all my plants just thriving and growing during the winter time. And there is a majority of them out there that are winter growers. And I hope you learned a little bit from this video and please come back for our next video. I'm going to be talking about vermicomposting because it's so important that um, we use the worm casting because worm casting are also um, to fight the uh, mealy bugs out there. So stay tuned for that and like, share and comment on this video if you please. Thank you very much and have a great day.